Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am Austin Cummings and today I am joined by Matthew Schultz. Hi. Hi. And also Jordan Weiner. Hey there. Hey, great to have you both with me. We have a a lot of fun topics to discuss. Revisit some of those Black Lives Matter conversations. Talk about Paper Mario as well. Very fun. And the latest trailer since that game is just a couple weeks away. Talk about what we've been playing and some of the other Nintendo news that has happened over the past couple weeks. So uh, to kick us off, there was a new trailer for Paper Mario colon the Origami King in which Paper Mario and his friends are up, up to their, I, their hard at work. He's throwing confetti and he's, and he's finding toads. What's, what's more to love? <laughs> so we got this trailer. It was a deeper dive about five minutes long. We'll put it in the show notes for Paper Mario that comes on the Switch on July 17th. And when we last visited the Paper Mario, the big topic that really captured the A&P host was those fold arms. <laughs> and was there too, too many folds in it? And I think we all enough. feel squarely yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, as you can hear, it's a consensus, too many fold arms. But we had some concerns and also some praise. The praise being we like Paper Mario format, very colorful, very fun, very toad. Things we were concerned about would be a return to the traditional role-playing game. That's R- RPG. Um, rocket-propelled grenade format. Would that be, you know, would we see a return to form there? And this trailer makes it seem like probably not totally. Not totally. But, but Mario rides in a shoe. He does. Okay, Jordan, hit us with your thoughts. <laughs> um, uh, excited about the, the shoe driving. That looks mm-hmm. fun. Similar note, uh, there's a section in which it appears to be very Wind Wakery. You're on a boat with some navigating on the water. <laughs> yeah, very that's Wind Waker, in, baby. Yes, very interested in seeing where that's going to go. Um, <laughs> I, I... I, I just as a recap, I'm coming to this as a super fan of the first two Paper Mario games. Then I just ducked out for the rest of the series. I think most people um, would say that's the preferred way to play these yeah. games. <laughs> so I Duck think out. I think that I I uh, I'm I'm now I'm concerned. I was originally optimistic. Now I'm 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 uh, more cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I, I feel I like, like I found the, new things to love, but also new things to hate, and such is the way of the. <laughs> Um, so one yes. one example is the bosses being craft supplies. My initial reaction was, I love this. This is hilarious. Like the tone of Paper Mario is still here. Like this like really captured me. I thought it was great. Then I started to get concerned because I'm like, why are they revealing three of the bosses now? Oh, I know. It's a lot why of boss would they, reveals for probably <laughs> six bosses in the game, this? maybe. <laughs> it seems yeah, like that's what I'm like, oh, too. God. There's five. <laughs> yeah. There's only five uh, worlds. I think there's only yes. five like worlds that you go to for the five streamers, which feels pretty minimal. <laughs> right. So and we yeah. here are three of the five streamers ourselves. You get it? Woo, little YouTube <laughs> streamer, streamers, baby. We're not even streaming. Uh, for the viewers at home, we kind of devised a little project for ourselves, which is that we're going to pick out kind of three specific things about the trailer to kind of discuss. So Jordan, that is your first of them. Kind of we can count through as a fun listicle, which I know we all enjoy, just like that word. So the <laughs> item number one, the bosses. Yes. Yes. That that is my my first topic. So that's my reaction. Super fun, but also why are you telling us all of this? And yeah, why like this is three of the five things we're we're gonna fight. I feel like the gimmick the gimmick has been revealed. <laughs> um, this is so true. A little too a, a little surprise. too early for me. Yeah. Well, I think it would have been, yeah, I don't know. I think mean, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. I mean, but, the interesting thing about Paper yeah. Mario is it was never, it was never about, like, it was about, like, a storybook, you know? It was like, a, yeah. it was not about, like, oh, crayons and, you know, confetti and all the, like, the paper gimmicks, which are still fun. But yeah, I, my, my, my initial take from that, if we're doing our little listicle thing here, it was initially the bosses. But I also just found, I think I just, I just found the trailer very charming and funny but like the announcer of like this is a toad this is also a toad yeah and you guessed it <laughs> you toad. Guessed the toad, which i can't tell is, is them making fun of themselves because it's obviously a common like issue people have with the last couple of games i don't think so i don't think they're that aware <laughs> that it's that, that, it's, that <laughs> is just so tone deaf because like 
if like someone got a hold of that script ahead of time before that that came out, we were like, right. "Oh my god, are you kidding me?" It's literally just naming off like toads. Um, right. And the toads have different colored hats, right? We've confirmed. Ooh, Ooh. back to the toad lore, baby. <laughs> they hats or they heads? You tell them. Okay, AMP on the count of three. Are they hats or heads? I said one, two, three, go. Okay, two pairs. Okay, here we go. Oh, I missed one. That. Two, Two, three, three heads. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and that is a consensus, ladies and gentlemen. We all agree, definitely heads. Not some perverse, terrible hat thing where he removes it to have a smooth baby scalp. But I do want to say that, Matt. Um, I feel like as the pair of Mario series has moved on, they've broken the, kind of the fourth wall of like the paper element more and more. Uh, mm-hmm. Namely, uh, in the 2D approach. So like the first game certainly 2d and even thousand year door right as far as the way you in which you move along a plane you can go forward and back like within the plane, but largely the game is presented as a you know 2d image and that kind of works with like that oh paper is flat that's that's a gimme but then in super paper mario you could turn the wiimote and also walk like into the screen to find more Mm -hmm. secrets that it was just kind of just more emphasized um and then sticker star, it's like the mechanic is like something that is a material object, a sticker, you know, uh, color splash of the ink. And I do feel Nintendo as a whole, they've gotten like, I love the way they've experimented with these craft games like Yoshi with, and for crafting and Yoshi, for wool. Kirby. Kirby's had yeah. the clay for the, the drawing games. But um, but like or like even a link to the past has like that doll, you know, kind of play how playhouse play school dollhouse look to it yeah. but i feel like in the case of like for yoshi it was kind of part of the design which is like hey you turned around and there was like the the fun like back of the crafted thing whether it's like back of a cereal box or taped yeah. together and th- it was very um, obvious so like was, someone to put it there you know yeah yeah had a little it became stand, more tape. part of the game and i feel like it's especially for this in the past couple of Mario games where it's like yeah really leaning into the like paper aspect is like actually something that affects maybe the narrative in the case of certainly Mm -hmm. the boss battles here which i like but it does feel like it's getting further from the core thing which is just like this is you know a somewhat lack of a better adjective like epic storyline just presented with this cute art style now it's more like oh we're playing around kind of in a you know set set of i don't know drawing utensils and things it's like uh, it feels smaller Still mm. good in a different way, but not exactly the same like sweeping story of good and evil that like, Thousand Year Door was. More just, um, you know, this is these are cute ways of playing very explicitly with ways in which right. we can manipulate paper. Here's my. Uh, we're gonna go. We'll reverse it. We'll do. Uh, um, we're, we'll snake back. So my second thing, second thing is that all throughout the trailer, that second trailer, I was enamored with how beautiful the game looked. I was just like, mm. wow, this is really colorful. And even though you showed me all five areas, like I <laughs> yeah. very much want to go and explore them. Um, For sure. And uh, to me, that was great. Because I remember in the first couple, of, I think I said in one of the podcasts, I wasn't like that taken away by the first trailer. I was like, this doesn't look all that. And it was probably the same. It was probably the game was probably just as finished then. But for whatever reason, I think getting a bigger, better look at it, I was just like, wow, this looks beautiful. Um, and so. You know, that that got me excited. Yeah. Agreed. I was gonna say something similar. I was gonna say the the level design. I thought each of the worlds looked awesome as well. Um and I've always been a big fan of the level design and like the kind of fully realized little chapters of mm-hmm. um of the first couple of Paper Mario. So similarly on the on the bad side, I'm sad that we've seen all of them because I wanted some of them to be a surprise. Um but uh but from what I've seen it uh it looks well, really beautiful and like I exciting. presume one of them is gonna a, be that volcano do. that the castle is sitting on, right? Which like they That's don't fair. really talk about but like all Yeah the... and I mean like legally if it's a video game it's gonna need a lava level. Yeah, right. It's so that, required. I mean otherwise you just can't even it's not even allowed to be on the sh- store shelves. It's just a lot of red paper mache just flying yeah. in the air. <laughs> How big do you think those environments are going to be, Matt? Yeah, I'm really concerned that, like, that, like, the, like, desert was, like, that's it. Like, everything you saw, <laughs> like, with the, like, building in the background. I don't know, mm-hmm. though, because you also saw everything the, sh- the light touches. <laughs> I, th- this, I can't tell if it's the Savannah. same, but when the, he's in the car and he's driving or he's in the shoe, is it, it, it looked like the <laughs> same aesthetic as the, the other, like, part of the desert. 
like with the neon lights and the the temple and the background or like the mm-hmm. pal- the palace. Mm-hmm. I didn't. If that is the same area, then it's hopeful because then it, it seems like it's a lot bigger. Um, but I, I'm not all that hopeful that those. I think it's like a big overworld, and then you get to the area, and it's just like everything you see there is. I don't know, like what we already saw. Right, except for the shadow area, which is the elephant graveyard. Yes. I do think that, like... Um, Don't go there. I did get major Odyssey vibes in this, especially yeah. like the discreet plants. And I did feel that a little bit with the desert. Like, the desert especially has that with amazing the desert. In Odyssey, like the amazing, like, uh, yeah, Dia de los Muertos-styled characters, and this great Mexican influence, and the colors, and it's, like, kind of frozen, so it's kind of a twist. This was kind of felt similar, where it's like, oh, it's desert, but there's, like, these neon signs. I, I know that is probably, I'm sure, a creative challenge. And off the top of my head, I can't come up with like a better idea, which is like, okay, desert, it's lifeless and bland. So how do we subvert that? It's like make it, you know, loud and colorful in the in the structures. Um, but it did feel kind of familiar. But yeah. it does look great. And I so one of the things that stood out to me, one of my three, was the like just the types of locomotion. You mentioned Jordan the the boat. I love that mm-hmm. as a Nintendo fan. Also, anytime we see a boat, we're all like, ah, yes, Wind Waker. Only because there's so few great like <laughs> boat examples I can think of. Yeah, I liked that. I liked the size of the worlds we talked about last time. I do like the fact that the worlds have more depth to it. Like, there is a fair amount, looks like, probably to explore. You know some of those things will be well hidden. You know, behind a structure you can't really see in one view, kind of 2D. And uh, or when they find the treasure chest and walking along like a narrow path. Yeah. It seems like there'll be... A fun element that I don't expect to be huge, but I liked the travel aspect. One thing that they mentioned in that trailer was like it was it didn't specifically or explicitly say like arms like it was like paper craft like mechanics or skills or some like abilities yeah. paper abilities not fold the arm like like used in many different ways it was like and so i don't know if that was like a clever way to just basically say like you're going to use these arms in a lot of different ways to like peel back perforated things and very like context sensitive like you're up against a wall that has perforated edge so is it that or are there actually other paper abilities that they're talking about and i mean they haven't that was the trailer to show us other paper yeah. abilities. I mean, you wonder like just the shoe count, you know, do yeah. the paper mache yeah. things count. So maybe what's what's going on in the sky? Confetti. Love- confetti is the new power. That's okay. what we get. In I, addition I to the like, arms, you I get did the like confetti. that mechanic of like filling in the world in different places with some of the confetti that you want to like explore new things. I also really enjoyed the like trivia. Like I love that they took you through all these different things, and they're like. You might be in a trivia. The shy, like, the shy guys show. finish last. I yeah. think is what it says. Which was <laughs> very, very funny. Also, I froze. I froze uh, the screen a couple of times just to like read the dialogue of people in the background or yeah. like actual characters. And it's again, it's it's funny. It's gonna be I a fun, fun twenty-five hour game. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. probably a perfect thought as to have the length of it too. I I wanted to say like the, with the five worlds thing we keep coming back to. I do feel an element of sadness. And I think. When I think of like kind of the B tier, probably Nintendo games for like first party games of the last of the Switch generation, at least I they all do have this very similar element. So who knows how this one will come out? None of us have played it. But for um, Mario Tennis on Switch, for example, it has the same type of like kind of MacGuffin. There's five of them. It was very Infinity Stones. You'd like go to each of the distinct environments, all of which were like snow mountain and desert world and lush jungle like the very you know iconic video game kind of trope settings and then get like the item there and it's like that's one of five and then yoshi's crafted world has the same thing where there's these power gems that grant a wish and you must collect the five of them and each one has like a very distinct world and it obviously this is doing the same thing with like the five ribbons and I think what makes Thousand Year Door so great, there are many things that make that game great, but what I really loved about it was that it was surprising and it kind of had like a slightly darker yeah. edge. Like it was very like, um, it was more kind of like sci-fi fantasy than, yeah, um, than like I was expecting. Dangerous. Yeah. And it, and it surprises you in the gameplay too, that you get to play in between levels, not just as Peach, but also as Bowser. Like there mm-hmm. were so many clever elements in there. Um, it was just such a great story. Uh, and so I will be sad if we 
lose those things or there's there's not as much of a return to yeah that. it seems like um, different i think that was the main takeaway um and game explain has a really fun video where they talk about some of these things they mentioned that on one of the websites luigi talks about what he's up to but you do wonder like is that just a simple narrative thing like luigi's like i'm off to do my own adventure or is it going to be something more interesting is a point they make about like will luigi be playable in some capacity could mm-hmm. that be fun um yeah my third and final thing is we've already talked about the toads like finding the toads okay am i just like a a dumb stupid idiot or is there an obvious marker for those toads when they find them in the trailer? Like I know the announce the narrators being like a little sarcastic, but it wasn't immediately obvious to me that a toad would be like in the frying pan or on the tree. I know the like there were things on it, but they didn't scream toad with a mushroom head. When I saw that, was there obvious to you guys or did it seem like they were kind of stumbling across them? It seemed like it was, uh, anything that looked like, out of place so in the place. one where the yeah, one right. where he bonks the flower pot those yeah. flowers like clearly looked different in, like okay, a folded okay, up piece of paper yeah. than the rest of the flowers yeah so i don't know if you just are going around bonking everything <laughs> with your hand yeah, i guess that was my concern was like am i going to be just constant like every frying pan in this room is getting turned up i was going to say though the, the, the frying i when they were on the frying pan it was just an egg in a frying pan like i didn't yeah. take a closer look at it but it, it was just it, to me it looked like just an egg so it was kind of cool yeah. that Maybe there are some that are more obvious, maybe not. Even but in though, fairness, you, Toad is kind of just an egg. He's just kind of an egg. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you well, can... Now bear. we all know the egg one. That's an automatic... We automatically know where five are. There are a dime a dozen. Based on this trailer. <laughs> also, there was like a little <laughs> Toad like jumping up in a shelf above that uh, kitchen. I don't know if you... I noticed that. that. Yeah, so I'm like... I did see that too. That one was obvious where I'm like... I, see, I hope it is not one. that many Toads. We talked about this before on the episode in previous episode. The toad thing, like, okay, toads, taking toad to task. <laughs> it's a new A&P segment. I loved him when I was younger, because he was like, look, he's a boyish character. Super Mario Brothers 2, he's the strongest and fastest of the pack. Can't jump super high, but I was like, that's fun, and it's not one of the obvious characters. I love that. At this point, toad is very obvious, and he's all over the place, and I would, in these games, he's just, everything is using toad as, like, he can be anything. You know, mm. he can be something to find. He can be someone who gives you a tutorial. He can be, he can work any type of job, you know? Yeah, he's, and he's the end all be all answer. He for- is lazy. <laughs> I do like that seemingly they impact the battle system slightly. Like they rally around you, um, which is cool. But finding him is not, yeah. And then, okay, biggest critique of this trailer. In the trailer with the new characters, we see at one point and a new character in quotes highlighted that has the name Professor Toad. And I'm going to take Nintendo to task, which is to say, this Toad is basically wearing exactly the Captain Toad getup, but he doesn't have, like, the Spelunker's light. Why on earth not make him Captain Toad, which would be a great way of just, like, continuing the lineage of this character? Well, you never know. Maybe there's a, a Captain Toad reference later. Maybe he's Maybe related there is, but just to like Captain to Toad. To have Professor he's Toad. Brother. And he's not like, it's not like he's I'm calling a it book now. to teach with. Super he's Smash Brothers. Toad either. So they're going to totally snub <laughs> Captain Toad and bring Professor Toad to Professor Smash. Professor Toad is just a more <laughs> boring bird. Can you imagine? And they're going to be like, look, we brought Paper Mario to Smash. Because <laughs> all the buddies in the trailer, I like the Babom. Like, lo- he looks wide eyed. And that's cute. Like the yeah, Babom he, buddy. But he he's lost not like a grumpy old sailor, like no, with a short fuse. He doesn't like know an, who he is. I, I, guess, I guess. But he's not. Like, Hammock <laughs> is kind of an interesting one because he's a bad boy or girl as a partner but the rest like normal just normal bomb that's fine i wouldn't say i'm <laughs> loving it at least like goomba yeah. thousand year door has like a little it, adventure it, yeah yeah it's it. it's disappointing that they're not Aaron. they don't look unique or have some kind of like you they're not distinct right like if you can mm-hmm. you remember all the characters from thousand year door because of how cool looking they were and they're right. and they were they're fun and i'm hoping the writing's still going to be great it's just their For characters sure. are not as memorable. And you're right. The k- Professor Toad better have some kind of distant relation to Captain Toad, Toad. You better prove to me that you're worthy of my love because I'll give it. I'll give it easy. <laughs> but I want to make sure you've earned it. And with maybe, the case, Professor Toad, it's not looking good. Maybe uh, Captain Toad was like a, an apprentice of theirs at some point. You know, maybe they can connect it. They wanted to do more field work. <laughs> 
Yeah, and Professor, <laughs> Professor Toad is more he's senior, a, but he's not Toad's he's Worth, academic. which is another he's band. Not, he's not used to being out in the field. This is a <laughs> more leg work than he's than he's ever done before. <laughs> yeah, true. And this is the backstory I want for Professor Toad, which is definitely the <laughs> definitely C tier Toad. <laughs> Professor you, Toad is what people think A-tier, Captain Toad is supposed A-tier to be called. A tier Toad's Worth. <laughs> B tier Captain Toad, still good, but not as good as Toadsworth. So this is the tier list. I guess S tier Toadsworth, just there adjust accordingly. But definite D tier Professor, blue and yellow Toad from New Super oh, Mario Brothers, maybe C tier. Wait till you play. Wait till you play. Maybe <laughs> Professor Toad will. No, I'm you, ready. Right? I don't think he's gonna surprise me. <laughs> You've heard of Bug Fables, right? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's great. Uh, Jordan, and for anyone who's listening. <laughs> <laughs> funny joke there it's just there? Jordan. <laughs> but yeah bug fables is basically a like a thousand year door like um paper mario style rpg that's out on switch right now and it just came out I'm like interested this game seems like it's going to be more in the vein of the last few but probably have looks like a more interesting battle system yeah and the battle system did look cool and i thought sliding and flipping the goombas to the other plane um I hadn't considered that was going to be an option. And that right away, I was like, well, this could be kind of fun mm-hmm. and leave some good puzzle solving elements in there. More interesting. Jordan, what, what did you think of the boss fight mechanic of trying to get like line up the tiles to get to it? To attack. I, I wasn't expecting that. I thought yeah. it was cool. Yeah. My main question is, they say that your partners can help you in battle. I don't see them in any of the clips. <laughs> yeah, prove helping it. You in battle. Um, and so that's another thing with the, with the partner design, like what makes the, my favorite past partners memorable is the like cool attack they could do like Lady Bo in the first one with her like fan smack ability. Like they all had such cool little mechanics yeah. when they helped you in battle. And so, um, I don't know if those, those nuances will be lost or if there's some other mechanic that they're just not showing us yet. Yeah. I wonder if they'll have that level of, um level of excitement and creativity when they all go up to fight a uh, a stick of Elmer's glue if they're going <laughs> to so. It's some updates we want to talk about Blacklist Matter resources that we had mentioned on the last show and we want want to you know uh, bring up and highlight this week. Jordan, do you want to kick us off on this one? Yeah, sure. Um, Just wanted to continue the conversation that we were having last week. Uh, One thing that I've been doing is making an effort to kind of look up um, different uh, black writers um, in the game journalism sphere. Um, I just want to call out one article that I especially appreciated by Jordan Miner over at PC Mag, um, who also kind of links out to a list of other writers to follow. Um, So that's been one way where I've been trying to diversify the voices that I'm hearing from when I'm trying to get my news on the gaming industry and just hear some different perspectives about how people are reacting to games coming out, representation in games. Um, and also like we were talking about last week, how gaming companies can kind of walk the talk. They'll put out really, Mm -hmm. uh, very basic statements. Um, we saw some great donations coming out of some companies, um, but some kind of lack of clarity from others. And so I think like all other industries and people right now, the gaming industry has a a lot of reckoning to do with like, okay, we say that we care about this, but are we actually spending the time to look more deeply at the decisions that we're making in games? Um, Another Mm -hmm. article I was looking at from screen rat, um, according to a 2019 international game developers association study, only 2% of people working in the games industry identify as black African American, African or Afro Caribbean. Um, So that's not yeah. really a surprising number, but I think it does speak to something that we're all anecdotally aware of, which is lack of representation and people working behind the scenes in gaming, mm-hmm. um, which then just leads to there being less uh, games that have characters of color or less games that are more mindful of the representation of characters of color. So this is something I've been doing is and we'll, we'll link out to these articles in the show notes is just um, trying to hear from different perspectives and challenge myself when I'm thinking about games just as I'm doing in all the other hobbies and things that I'm consuming thinking about how I can support black developers um and black owned businesses in my area um and thinking about where I'm getting my news yeah that's a great a great point a great way to yeah like you like you said diversify the voices yeah definitely gotta link some of the articles you mentioned in the in the pod um I know I'm I still have to read through some of them specifically the the PC 
Yeah, and I think just like on Twitter, you know, so many individuals just from the industry are so, so active, you know, so much as we know is happening on Twitter and just adding and taking the simple step to follow people like that and uh, making sure that that's content, you know, and I think that a lot of, there's a lot of really, really positive political activism and accountability, especially in game press Twitter. And I think that is something that stems from, you know, back in kind of the Gamergate times when that was really capturing a lot of uh, you know, negative attention from like, you know, quote unquote fans to have a pushback from people who really matter in the industry, people taking a stand to say, this is you know not unacceptable. One other article I wanted to mention was on Kotaku. This is from last week by Ash Parrish. And she talks about the uh, for Juneteenth, 1865, when uh, black Americans were, when the last slaves hold out, which was the last Confederate state being Texas, uh, black Mer- Americans are finally set free on June 19th, 1865. And so that date has been made into, as we know, holiday this year, Juneteenth. And so to recognize that and call attention to some things in the game sphere where the, where slavery is a topic and, or black representation, uh, in the, in the context of, uh, racism and adversity. So she has called attention to four games in particular that, uh, really do a good job with this topic or at least approach it in some some degree and as someone who has has played all of these games i want to give a quick shout out especially to uh, assassin's creed freedom cry i can't speak to the port that ended up on the switch uh, this spring but maybe it's good maybe it's not i don't really know but this is a spin-off dlc that i played back on playstation 4 of black flag and in this you play a former slave and all of the mechanics in the game revolve around liberating other slaves from these colonies and it is very good stars black assassin which is really the only game that that does so um but it is definitely a worthwhile entry to check out we'll put the link with the rest of these games also in the show notes uh the next couple topics we want to talk about were just a couple quick news items the first of which being Summer is is now, and now you can go for a dip. Matt, you want to talk about Animal Crossing? Sure, yeah. Starting in a couple of days, so well beyond the time you've listened to this podcast. <laughs> this update will be out. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not anything new. I think a lot of people either saw it coming um, or were just, um, you know, thinking back to the New Leaf game um, where you could swim officially. But now swimming is being unlocked, so your characters can now go in the water and fetch uh, all kinds of different types of sea life. Um, you also meet an otter. And also Gulliver uh, is like a pirate now, and they're not really talking about, about that much, which I'm excited about because I love... Is Pascal <laughs> the, o- the otter? Yes. Yes, it is Pascal, him. Yeah. yes. There also are some some items associated with both of those two characters. But um, I mean, this is what we thought would happen. Um, and they also announced a second update, like wave two uh, for summer coming later. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that's I mean, I think they're really taking the Splatoon approach to this game, yeah. especially one that's literally like, you know, some players kind who of are the ninjala approach, if you will. <laughs> Have you played that? I so I tried to download the demo when it initially came out. Yeah. Um, but no, no, I, I've uh, I've seen I've seen a couple of things though where it's not I mean, ninjala is not quite Splatoon, but it's you know it copies it's the, the vibe. <laughs> yeah! It's bubblegum, baby. <laughs> no, so yeah. um, no, I'm I'm excited about this because obviously I think to me it means things like. Roosters and other like beloved parts of the game that aren't quite in the game yet will show up at some point. Um, and also I love that they're taking a character that we've traditionally, like we know Gulliver washes up, you know, and that if you mm-hmm. find now his cell phone pieces, he's going to give you some cool nautical themed items, but now something's, you know, it's, it's different. Um, mm-hmm. And also I really, I really want, I was hoping for more. I was hoping it was going to be like a a bigger update with more than just like, you can jump in the water now, but the animal crossing community is still super hyped for it. It makes me think though, after COVID or prior to COVID, or if there was, if if we weren't in quarantine and and the game industry was still kind of firing on all cylinders and E3 happened, would we have gotten like a bigger animal crossing? Like, like, you know, 
when you're watching the Nintendo Direct, would it have been like both parts of the Summer Direct? Would we had like a here's what you can continue to expect from Animal Crossing or not? And right now, I feel like this is a good. This would have been a good time to release more information. Um, and maybe it's just because it's not ready. But I feel like in terms of Nintendo, it's like Animal Crossing and Jump Rope and 51 games and soon to be you know uh paper mario so and animal crossing is definitely your larger of those of those games so why not like show folks what's coming really down the pipeline so speaking as someone who has kind of lapsed in the game so i've talked about before i like got super into it and played a ridiculous amount and then just decided i had to, like wasn't getting any new furniture and then i just kind of tapped out i hadn't played in a month um, this interested me enough that I'm now going to like pick up my switch again and play. So yeah, even a little good. nugget like this, I think is going to bring people back who were super into it, but haven't been keeping up with it. So and even if it's not a strategy they would have preferred to employ, I feel like every couple of months throwing yeah. us a little bone um, mm-hmm. is enough to, to make people log back. Also in, this, this last Saturday was the, uh, the bug off for the season. Um, and that was actually a lot of fun. Just like I, I, I really enjoyed, um, the first fishing tournament. Um, like uh, that was so much fun. And the, the, like the way you can earn points and earn items and like, it made me want to play. And unfortunately, cause I was packing, I had to go back in time to play. Um, it was the same, it was the same day, but like. <laughs> They didn't treat it like a holiday where, you know, like with Bunny Day, like they wouldn't let you actually do that. Um, but it, Nobody it, tried to go back to Bunny Day. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> None of our top time traveling scientists have attempted. They've decided to leave that page of the history book closed. Also, like there's this, the wedding season thing going on right now. Has it been yeah. really like uh, a, an interesting way for people to, to get a new set of items that like. There are reasons to jump in back into Animal Crossing. I've been playing still every day, but my playtime has dropped significantly. It's mostly like check the store, see what's new, grab the, you know, the bottle and find all the fossils. Full two weeks with no new fossils. I got a lot of money, but that was toward right. the end of my like yeah. Animal Crossing playing. I was like, okay, there's Yeah, Blathers really burned nothing you. new for me. Wasn't here. it yes. you that you told me that you had read someone's like interesting like um like fan like theory of like maybe they'll interest a char- like a, a dog character who like buys like bones that like no, you already have. D- like like basically interest a character, like you have people who buy fish and you'll buy bugs. What about like fossils? Like can, you Ooh. know like maybe he'll like collect certain kind ones. Of a at spooky a higher idea. Price. The dog wants to like eat Gnaw on the like bones a, of once living animals are probably were just as sentient as he is. But I mean, the, that's what the well, other two animals are doing. We've discussed the kind of trippy, yeah, the trippy world of Animal Crossing before. Where that's there's exactly what that birds bug. that yeah, there's birds that land on your sign, but there's also birds running the right. the airport. It's a, re- I, it's a regular goofy Pluto situation. We don't have time. More big end in the news, Min Min and Smash. Any quick takes? I think it's a cool character reveal. I'm glad it is not the the Spring Man or Ripping Girl, kind of the more obvious. Plus, all the DLC characters have been dudes, am I right? They've all basically been white dudes. Yeah, they've all been Fire Emblem characters. <laughs> yeah. Also, I mean, one, it's, it's, it's great to show Arm some love, and especially, uh, um, you know, it is, it is a woman of color. It also yeah. is a character who, um, it, for like it's the first character that can like punch in both directions, and like mm-hmm. I think the the it's a fr- like it's really interesting. It's a fighting character in its own fighting game that is now in a much better fighting game, and is and it, and it was it was directly the decision as Sakurai mentioned in his in his um you know as a video. It was he yeah. was like oh how about so and so and and the the director was like no min min like i want you to put min yeah. in and there's no lead character there's no main character of arms it's like that that was from the director of arms so i, I thought that was cool I and mean, besides the gooey green boy who's the obvious lead in arms <laughs> what's it he's yeah. a helix i think is his helix name. helix yeah. our boy <laughs> <laughs> get in there fun, like a fist trophy uh, um, no, it's it's fun. I might, like I said, my friends and I have been playing a lot of Smash throughout quarantine time, um, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. And we're all excited to to get this new character. 
try her out. Yeah, no, I'm so. totally excited too. Great to have a character of color. Great to have a female character highlighted. There's so few in Smash. It was that was that was, that was great. I, I'm was great. so I'm really hoping the next character. I hope they're more Nintendo characters specifically, and I really hope Paper Mario franchise gets some kind of like that. I I think a paper like. They would do such a good job with the paper mechanics. If they are all Nintendo characters, what do you guys think, yay or nay, is Waluigi the final character? Let's go around. <laughs> yay. I'll, I'll, yay. I, that's think, my... I think if they're all Nintendo characters, yeah. he's making the cut. Oh, for sure. And I don't even want him. But now, you know what? Give it to us. I think We're ready. Springman is an assist trophy, right? Um, and Springman was also Sakurai's first like, thought of like, oh, we would, this is the ARMS character you want us to make, right? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. So I don't you know care, what? even though Screw Waluigi's it. in there. School's I out I, forever, baby. Bring Waluigi in. Give him a, not a tennis racket because he already has an assist trophy. Give him some other sport thing, you know? You know, so in the game, you can interact with assist trophies, right? So I see the, I think what's going to happen is like, someone's going to throw the assist trophy. It's going to be Waluigi. And then you're going to actually see the real Waluigi show up and like kind of hit him off, hit the assist trophy off screen. Yeah. And, and, boom. You, and you think, and they'll probably kiss, right? And then they'll kiss, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go. It was really quick. Pokemon. Big end in the news. Really super fast. They had they had announcements last week and then another one the week after. Pokemon Unite was announced by Tencent. It's a MOBA style game. These games are massive. You choose a Pokemon character. Multiplayer between Switch and Mobile which um, is good for the game. does make me think it's not going to be like as core gamer-ish is always my concern. I love, I play Pokemon Masters every day and Pokemon Go every day. And so I'm all about Pokemon mobile games. I'm like, part of me is interested. Obviously people are upset. The one thing I want to call attention to about this though, people are very upset because it's like not the game they wanted, right? But when we got a Sword and Shield announced, there's had a lot of toxicity because of the lack of a national dex and only 400 Pokemon in there at the time. Like a lot of people were like, you know, just wait, you know, just wait Pokemon company. Like we don't need a Pokemon game every year because it is an annual franchise, right? Like give them the time basically as a trade off to then get every Pokemon when the game comes out, like really coming out when it's ready. And I feel like that is what we're seeing. Whether or not it results in the national dex, who can say? But we are seeing them not release a major Pokemon game this year. We are getting the DLC for Sword and Shield, but I think this is the first time in a number of years. You know, we had Sword and Shield last year. We had Let's Go the year before. We had Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. We had Sun and Moon. Like, you know, then we had the Oracle yeah. or the <laughs> Ruby and Sapphire remakes like the year before, X and Y. Like, um, it's basically annualized. We're not getting an installment this year. People are so upset they're not getting the thing they want. It's, you know, I think all of these examples or people on the internet are upset. It's always just like a, you know, the greater Occam's razor truth is always the right one, which is that mm -hmm. people are going to be upset no matter what, you know, I, I mm. let's go. Johto comes out and people will be salty that it, you know, whatever, some limitation is the number of Pokemon or that it isn't, or, you know, the Pokemon are in that, that aren't in sun and moon or, you know, sword and shield. People are like, Oh, how can I be in this? And I'll, like, there's going to be something. This is there something it's, it does not matter to me and i don't think it really matters to them but they are salty about unite <laughs> i'm hoping it's cool yeah i i is is it uh is it gonna be like a free to play on the switch or because it is if it so, is and I'll, I'll try with it with like add-ons um i will say that i I, I, that uh, that makes me upset about, about like you know where people are at with the Pokemon franchise because you're getting DLC like when deal the DLC came, uh, like news came out months ago we were all like uh, many of us bought it I've started to play it um, and I started playing it forgetting that I had bought <laughs> bought the dang thing um, but the when's the next one's coming out in fall right so mm -hmm. like that that's that's their game i mean they're, they're building it like they're and the i'll tell you this like that like the world is it's huge like the the wild area portion in this dlc was is like that was my favorite part of the last game uh or the last game the main game and so the i'm a little like yeah it's taking me a while to like roll into it again and be like what am Same. i doing me like, too. We, um, but definitely 
Definitely. It's like there's going to be a, people were so salty about Let's Go when it was announced. You know, it had Pokemon Go ish mechanics. It was revisiting the Kanto and the 151. You know, people had no shortage of ire about that game being released in lieu of like a core Pokemon game. So much so mm. that, you know, Pokemon Company basically came out and they're like, there will be a core one for Switch the following year, just to like appease yeah. everyone. Right. And now everyone's like, oh, we wanted Let's Go again. And, you know, people just want to be upset. About something I that watch. they feel ownership over because it's Pokemon and we grew up with it. And I think there's just like this is not a, a hot take, but there's just so much entitlement. It's an it's an interesting for sure. dynamic, for, and not just gaming. Although it often like the like really terrible responses often show up in gaming, but <laughs> sure it's, it's any type of any type of thing that has a fan base. I think it's it's always an interesting conversation and something I could talk about forever. Is the dynamic between creators and fans and like especially in this area where for for gaming you can constantly be adding to your game in the current era of gaming that we live in like how much do creators need like how much should they listen to fans how much should they fix things that piss off fans like how much do they owe fans and are they making a game to specifically appease them are they making a game because of some like artistic vision that they have anyway getting off topic but i I recently watched a um a uh really good video essay on this YouTube channel that I follow called game makers toolkit that I would highly recommend. Um, that was talking about this exact topic of like how much should creators listen and react to fan comments. Um, Hmm. and it's something that I think about if I were, if I were a game creator, I think you're just put in a really tough position because no matter what you do, especially for beloved franchises, you're going to end up pissing people off. Um, and this like comp- said, this like, is the that, company that's yeah, bringing us Pokemon exactly. Snap again. Come on, everyone. This is a dream come true. <laughs> also, calm down. It, and it, Pokemon it, Smile finally got some good hygiene going on. <laughs> Internet boys, come on, brush them, brush those teeth. Now, is it? Is I think it's Pokemon Unite. Didn't it? Ha- it's like got the like the, some of the, like the largest like dislike now of any Nintendo mm. yes, published video on YouTube. Who cares? No, like I know. I'm, sa- I'm saying like, yeah, yeah, What no, does no. it matter? Like, why? Like. What don't it's the play, same thing with Last of Us Two getting like, like super user review bombed on Metacritic because basically yeah. it stars three women. Like that's ultimately why yep. people are upset. Like they'll make a million excuses about what this character being written off is, or this is actually a thing, and they feel betrayed because this character has this thing occur to them. But like ultimately, it's it's a story about three women, and people can just cannot you know stand it, and so just things get review bombed. And that's Pokemon's its own thing. People are not. You know, Pokemon Company is not making games exclusively for everybody's whim and wishes. At the same time, they basically are. We're getting Pokemon Snap. Yeah. To, you know, Sword and Shield's got a ton more Pokemon in it. It is a core Pokemon game, you know, in every version of the world, word, including coming up with new content. Like, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon got a release a couple months ago no one's talking about with the remake on Switch. Like, yeah. all of the Pokemon content is there. This is just more Pokemon, you know, and yet yeah. people are like, oh, not what I wanted. Meanwhile, last time, everyone's like, just wait and do the right game the right time, and now it's like, one year without explicitly the game I want despite this DLC coming out for the game we got last year. Like, yeah. downvote, you know. It's, yeah, it's super annoying. I'm, like, so over-caring about it. I feel like it's same thing goes with, like, The Last of Us 2 news where it's like the controversy is just like such an eye roll and a sigh from me. Where it's yeah. Like, uh, why there's so like not only are there bigger fish to fry, guys. It's like it's just so misguided. It's not worth my time. It's not like uh, you know like when people complain about something and it's like, well, hey, there are people you know out there in worse shape than you. Like, how can you complain about something? But this is just like there are like the arguments are so bad and eye rolly for these yeah. things. Um, you know, if a Pokemon Night does not appeal and is bad. And certainly do not play this free game. And there is no shortage of Pokemon all over the hecking place elsewhere for people to enjoy. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, that man. said, I am pissed that in the new DLC, Cub <laughs> Fu, um, do you want to talk about the new DLC Isle Armor for just a minute? I have been playing it. And I will say that like, I think it highlights both the strengths and weaknesses of Sword and Shield like as a game, which is that the wild area is so cool. Mm-hmm. That's the strength. And discovering Pokemon is so fun. It has a bunch of Pokemon re-entered into the world. That's totally exciting. Some totally new ones as well. Um, so it has that fun sense of discovery. And it's like a fairly large area, with like a lot of water, too much water, some might say. It has like a good rival character, which people really wanted for a long time. A character that's like very sassy. And it, whereas yeah. for a while, the rivals have been like kind of a Does it a depend positive, on like, the uh, it does. game you have? Okay. But yeah. 
So I think both of them are pretty rude, though. Like I, yeah, I will say that my my brief like two hours of playing, or maybe an hour and a half, like it's been. I had to change my team out. Like I, initially, I was I went in, I destroyed the you know the the rival sure. right off the bat, and then I'm yeah, like in the really wild easy. area, and I'm like, oh my god, look at all these great Pokemon. They're yeah. all level sixty, and I can't help but one hit all of them with any of my so I'm like, same it's too easy this is a problem we talked about this jordan with you back yeah. with, back in the day mm-hmm. but um i do think the best parts of sword and shield were like the wild areas was just a little unfinished and the last thing i want to say about that is like there was a really cool event last week where it was like there was a max raid battle and if you beat him if a million trainers beat him like then you everyone would get a shiny version as long as they've used pokemon home uh, which is cool and the free app on the switch. But so that is cool. But like, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this. I'm going to like lobby up. It's, I've never done a raid online in this game. I played a ton of Pokemon go and understand it. And it's like, I lobbied and sat there and sat there and sat there and tried many times. No one ever joined. And like the whole Y con connect thing is really poor. And like, you know, every, there, there's no hope of my winning with the like AI auto filled in characters. You know, and it's just like, I can't enjoy this part of the game. And then some of the things that are new to this DLC, such as getting like max soup, which helps you get Gigantamax Pokemon more, much more easily, which is awesome. However, the resource required requires you to do the raids, which again, is not a system that really works reliably. So should I buy it? I've been I, waiting to hear your guys' reviews. Is it worth the, the money? I would probably wait to see what the Tundra the next DLC that was my thinking is like, and if it's good, cause Cub Fu is cute. The story is cute. The wild area is big. It's good to see new Pokemon. Um, can you buy, can you buy thin, one specifically and not no, you have to get the pass? Okay. It's a thin experience though. When this was out, like this was, you know, pre animal crossing and everything. Like I loved mm-hmm. being in the wild area and now it's just even better. But yeah. I also am like, I'm the champion. You yeah. know, they don't yeah. even talk. They don't even call you the champion. They don't give me enough respect the for that. They yeah, don't talk about Leon. I'm like, <sighs> and I love the post game of that game because you're like, you know, you're hailed as the champion, and you go in the battle tower. And I, but now, right? They're like, oh, who's this kid from? Hey, occasionally people reference it for the most part. Yeah, everyone's like, who is yeah. this guy? Like, good luck here. And then it's yeah. like, you know, just kind of classic. Like everyone else is trash. You. I think if you really, yeah. if you like Poke, if you like the mainline Pokemon games, like this is a no brainer. Um, and I think I liked it enough at the time to, to want more. I just didn't anticipate not, not like being in the same headspace. That yeah. I, was mm-hmm. I would say like as a model though, like if I think about this versus, Hey, we got a sword and shield two or, you know, something where it's like, it's, it's the same game, but there's a little bit of extra content, you know, right. a la Pokemon yellow. I would prefer this model of having even something that's $30. That's like downloadable content versus getting, like a slightly expanded upon game I've already played that has something new in the end game. Um, so I, I applaud that they're doing it. Yeah. So, you know what? I don't know. I say get it. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. We got the, the devil and the angel on my shoulder here. <laughs> which one is I'll which? Report back, I'll MP report listener. back next time on... I want them to take Wind Waker and Twilight Princess and port them over. I, yeah, I want the remaster versions of this. <laughs> <laughs> we we recently were gonna replay Wind Waker, but we are sad because we don't have a Wii U and it's not worth purchasing a still expensive Wii U just to play a remastered game. We already no, own definitely on the GameCube. Not, definitely not worth but it. But if we could get it on our Switch, I would pay money to own this game again because I would love a faster Triforce Shards component. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what, More than honestly, it honestly, I think that would be a great move for them. It's the Zelda uh, 35th anniversary. Put all the Zeldas mm. on the Switch. That's my that's yeah. my prediction. Wish to the universe. Yes, yeah, so Give funny. Me Zelda too. I just pulled out <laughs> as we were packing. I pulled out these old posters, and I used you know back when Club Nintendo was a thing, and I was a platinum member for at least, I don't know, three or four years. I know. But I have all those, I have all those exclusive posters that you could order. 
And one of them was the 30th mm. like Zelda anniversary poster. Yeah. Um, oh, and it's so nice. I was like, I'm going to send some of these to the two of you. Um, I'm although I'm sure Austin has them all. I could always use a second. Keep one sealed and keep one. Uh, <laughs> one. Um, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, well, should we wrap up at this point? Another Nintendo yeah. Podcast episode this. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Austin Cummings, and I was joined by Jordan Weiner. Goodbye. And Matthew <laughs> Schultz. Uh, thank you all so for listening. <laughs> Farewell. Avita saying goodbye. Adieu, adieu to you and you and you. Goodbye. Goodbye.